merits of arithmetic mean first merit is simplicity it is a very simple way of calculating arithmetic mean it's a very simple calculation easy to understand so it has the quality of simplicity second certainty because you are doing the actual calculation so whatever arithmetic mean or whatever answer you are getting that is sure and certain because the answer we are getting after doing proper systematic calculation so certainty is there now the third merit is it is based on all items that this means that arithmetic mean is based on all items because you have, when you have done the calculation you must have noticed one thing that each and every item we are taking into consideration so all the items are included so arithmetic mean is based on all items let me tell you one thing these merits and demerits are on the basis of other type of averages that means we are comparing other averages this is mean the other are mode and median median and mode are other two type of averages what you will learn later now comparing to these two this is more simple more certain and it is based on all items this is extensively used this means that this is widely used very popular and widely used method of calculating arithmetic mean then fifth is it is the most stable method that means it gives accurate result so it is considered as more stable method of calculating arithmetic mean then it's it is the basis of comparison that means you can easily do the comparison of different items or different data because the results are very accurate and this process of calculating arithmetic mean will help in comparison of data so these are basically the merits of arithmetic mean now what are the demerits arithmetic mean has some demerits now let us see what are these though it is widely used but it has certain demerits one is extreme values what do you mean by this if suppose there is a data of 10 items first value is 10 and last value is 10000 if you are taking out the average suppose it is round about uh, 500 so this is sometimes misleading because the lowest value is very low and this is very high so there is a wide gap and average suppose it is 500 600 you say that one person is getting salary this much one is getting this much average is 500 that means on an average you are saying that people are getting salary equal to 500 but one is getting only 10 right it may be per day so one is getting only 10 so 500 average is very different from 10 so in this way it shows extreme values sometimes when the data is very vast or there is a wide gap and then in that case when you take out the average then it will be little misleading right second is open end classes when open end classes are given like below and above two ends are open in that case you have to assume the ends you have to assume certain figure to take it as end of the first class and last class now when you are taking this open end classes below and above then as you are assuming certain figure so sometimes the result may not be very accurate so this is little drawback third is importance sometimes more importance is given to bigger items right bigger items means big values as i told you here also bigger values will change your data right so more weightage is given towards the bigger value and sometimes the result may not be very transparent or very accurate and fourth is strange results sometimes 
the results what we are getting after calculations that is very funny or you can say strange results. How? Suppose you are doing the calculation of number of children born in a particular year. An average number of children born is the answer you are getting in a particular area is 2.2. .2. Now, what do you mean by 2.2? .2? Children cannot be in the form of 2.2. .2. It may be 1, 2, 3, 4 like this. What does it mean 2.2 .2 on average? That means on an average 2.2 .2 children are born. 2.2 .2 is nothing. It is misleading. So, in certain cases it is giving strange results. Then fifth graphically it cannot be ascertained. In the case of mean you have to do the mathematical calculation and graphically you cannot show arithmetic mean as you can show median or mode. So, in this way mean has certain drawbacks, but still in most of the cases it is considered to be a very easy and accurate method of calculating arithmetic mean. So, it is finished now, it is over, we have completed the chapter measures of central tendency, one part only that is arithmetic mean and next time we will be taking another measure that is mode and median. Right? So, one part we have completed and I am sure you have followed each and every step. Okay? Practice more questions and learn more. Now, children we will take the mathematical properties of arithmetic mean. Here I have taken three main properties of arithmetic mean which is in your syllabus. So, you have to learn these three properties. I will explain these properties with the help of examples. First is the sum of deviations of the values from mean is 0. That means when we are taking out the deviations from assume mean it will not be 0, but when we take out the deviations from actual mean then the deviations are always the sigma of it is always 0. Right? So, sum of deviations, sum means total of deviations of the values from mean is always 0. This is the property of arithmetic mean. Now, how will you prove it? Now, symbolically this whatever state we have stated over here, this means sigma x minus x bar is 0. We want to prove this x minus x bar that means deviations taken from actual mean are always equal to 0, the total of it. Now, let us prove it. Suppose x column what is given, this is the data for x column 20, 30, 40, 50 and 60. Now, x minus x bar that means we are taking the mean of this. Now, what is the actual mean of it? First, we have to calculate because we cannot assume mean over here. Now, x column is this, sigma x is 200. Simple way of calculating mean is x bar is equal to sigma x upon n. Now, here sigma x is 200. Number of items are how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 200 divided by 5 is equal to 40. So, 40 is the actual mean, this is x bar, actual mean is 40, right. Now, you have to take out deviations from 40. How do you take out the deviations? 20 minus 40, that will be minus 20 because it is x minus x bar, this is x column, this is x bar. So, x is 20 here, x bar is 40. So, 20 minus 40 is minus 20, 30 minus 40 is minus 10, 40 minus 40 is 0, 50 minus 40 is this is plus 10, 60 minus 40 is plus 20. So, x minus x bar you have calculated this way, right. Now, what is the total of this? Let us see. This is minus 20 and minus 20, this makes 30 minus 30 
and this makes plus 30 minus 30 and plus 30 answer is 0 right. So, whenever you are taking out deviations from actual mean then sum of deviations from actual mean will always be 0 no matter whatever is the data and you can check it by taking any other example also and the answer will always be 0 if your calculation is correct. But if you take out the deviation from assume mean then the sum will not be 0. So, one property of arithmetic mean what you have learned over here is the sum of deviations of the values from mean is always 0 or you can say in other words sigma x minus x bar is 0. I think this property is clear to you. Now, second one if each value of the series is replaced by the mean the sum of their substitutions will be equal to the sum of individual series. What does this mean? If you are substituting each value by the actual mean then the total of this will be the same as the total of this what you have substituted right. For example, the data is here serial number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 x column is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Now, first you will calculate the actual mean over here sigma x is 150 n is number of items 5. So, 150 upon 5 actual mean is 30. Now, if you replace each value by the actual mean we have substituted here 10 substituted by 30 again 30 30 30. So, you are replacing each value by the actual mean and then by replacing it if you do the total here in this case it is 150 in this case also it is 150. So, here the property says if each value of the series is replaced by the mean mean here means actual mean the sum of their substitutions will be equal to the sum of individual series not the discrete and continuous series but sum of individual series given over here clear. So, this is another property or you can say mathematical property of arithmetic mean clear. Now, the third property this is in case of two related groups combined mean can be calculated by applying this formula x 1 2 is equal to x bar 1 n 1 plus x bar 2 n 2 upon n 1 plus n 2 this is the formula. That means, if the mean of two different groups or related groups are given then you can take out the combined mean by applying this formula. How do we take it? Now, here we have taken marks and students of two sections section A and section B for example. Now, average marks in section A this average marks means the actual mean in section A average marks are 40 in section B average marks are how much 30 and in section A there were 60 students in section B there were 40 students. Now, if the data is given to you in this form you are supposed to calculate the actual mean of it or the combined mean of both the sections how will you do it. So, the property says that we can do the total of combined mean or we can calculate the combined mean of two related groups in the case of arithmetic mean. Now, here the formula I have written down the same formula here putting the values x 1 x 1 is section A then 40 into 60 n 1 is 60 number of students n here means number of students these are 60 marks are 40. So, 40 into 60 and the second section B 30 into 40 30 is the marks and students number of students are 40. So, 40 into 60 plus 30 into 40 
upon now what is n1 this is n1 this is n2 so 60 plus 40 and you get the values like this so 14 to 60 is 2400 plus 13 to 40 is 1200 60 plus 40 is 100 now calculate it and you get the actual mean of both the sections combined together individually the mean was 40 for section A and 30 for section B but the combined average or combined mean is 36. So in this way the third property says that if the two related groups average is given then you can calculate the combined mean of both the related groups. Related groups means having the same characteristics or same description. So these are related groups. So these are three basic properties of arithmetic mean what you are supposed to learn. Okay.